hello, hola, hola, ¿cómo estamos? How are you doing? Um, antes de iniciar el vivo, quiero extender mis más grandes condolencias para la comunidad de origami en Argentina por el, por el fallecimiento de Noelia. Eh, siento mucho la pérdida de Noelia. Noelia era una origamista muy talentosa, una persona eh, con mucho talento que lamentablemente nos ha dejado. Así que mi más sentido pésame para la comunidad de origami en Argentina y para todas las personas que conocieron a Noelia. Así como era ella, ustedes saben que ya en este momento tiene un ejército de angelitos plegando. Ok. Vamos a comenzar entonces el vivo del de día de hoy. Por acá tenemos ya a Dasha. Hello, Dasha. Hello, mister. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, what am I doing? I'm actually holding... Uh... Ah, mister. You and Dasha always surprise me with everything you are doing because you are always doing something great and outstanding. You are talking about Dasha, yeah? No, I'm talking about both of <laughs> no. you. Both of you, yes. Well, before beginning, thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about your wonderful book. And mister, we're going to talk also about the World Marathon. Oh. We're going to invite oh. everybody, yes, to follow the, your, the profile of the marathon and to join the event, okay? Yeah. Ok. Uh, bueno, estas dos personalidades del mundo del origami no necesitan ninguna presentación. Por acá tenemos a nuestra querida Dasha y tenemos a Irán Garibi. Así que vamos a comenzar a platicar con ellos. Eh, we're going to begin talking to Dasha and Ilan Garibi. I know they don't need introduction because they are well known in the origami world. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to begin talking about this, and uh, I have a lot of questions to do. I read the book from the first letter to the last one, the whole book. Yeah. The whole book is here and here, believe me. And that uh, you made me smile sometimes, because sometimes you made me think about things that happened to me in the class, especially with the Ten Commandments. Oh my God, yes. And uh, thank you so much for this book. It's a wonderful book. And uh, my quest, my first question for you would be, how did you come with the idea of making a book of origami for teachers? Um, so maybe I'll start, Tasha. So uh, actually I'm teaching when my daughter was no, I think 12 or 13, she joined the school for gifted children. Mm -hmm. And my son was already there. And uh, I just retired from the army. And I said to myself, I'm going to teach origami in this school for gifted children. So um, I gave a course about origami, just origami. And uh, and my my manager, she was very happy about it, and it was uh, it was a good course. And uh, after one year, I said, okay, it's enough. But then my daughter said, no way. As long as I'm studying in this school, you're going to teach them, and you take me every Friday back and forth. Mm -hmm. Because it's a special, it's only one day a week they go there, so only Friday. So then I had to do another and another and another year. So I did uh, altogether five years of teaching origami, and every year I had to change my my curriculum mm -hmm. because I had children who continued with me. I, I couldn't repeat the course because they are new children, because it was the same children, yeah. and I had to come with more and more ideas. So it was origami, and then origami and creativity, and then origami and science, and then origami complex origami. I, I had so many lessons that I had to give and and 
once you have all of this, it's a shame that it will go away. Because after five years, I, I actually left the school and I moved to teach in a design school for, for university students. And then, then I had to rethink what I'm teaching because it cannot be the same. So I had to do this um, new course that is still running, by the way. I'm running it for the seventh time this coming uh, uh, 2024. And all this together was okay. I have to prepare everything so I can repeat it every year. So I write down my lessons, I write down my content, I, I put links to the files of the folder. Everything is very organized. I like to work hard the first time and then very easy on the second and the third and the fourth time. So I had all this content and uh, I was talking to Dasha, she already made one book of mine mm -hmm. and I said, uh, I need you to write another book and she was very happy about it and I think maybe I will allow her to talk about her teaching experience and what she brought to the book. Thank you so much mister. Mm -hmm. I, I don't imagine you teaching children. <laughs> you may, yes believe me because your origami is like a, so advanced that I don't imagine you teaching origami to children but that's true and something that you said that I like is that yeah you cannot teach the same things to children because if not they are going to tell you again yeah and yeah. that's true that's true thank you so much eh, le he preguntado a ilan garibi sobre por qué hacer lo que es un libro de origami para maestros y él me dijo que cuando se retiró de la fuerza armada él comenzó a dar clases de origami en una escuela eh, algo que descubrió él fue que tenía que su currículum era diferente año con año porque el currículum no puede ser lo mismo entonces él lo iba cambiando año con año y tomó muchas anotaciones que le fueron sirviendo poco a poco en el camino luego le dice a Dasha que se hacía en un libro con origami de origami para maestros porque tenía mucho contenido esa es la experiencia de él o sea él no es solamente diseñador sino que él también trabaja enseñando origami Dasha what about you? What moved you to make a book for teachers? I don't know, but I am teacher. So I have a I'm teacher who can't teach. So I guess that's the uh, it was the closest thing to teaching, which I could get at the time. Uh, I was teaching in Slovakia, but as I live in Switzerland and there is different language and it's complicated, so I can't teach. But I was teaching origami and I wasn't teaching it as Ilan had the chance to, to do during five years uh, with uh, basically the same students. And uh, so I don't have that experience. I have only experience of doing kind of extra curricular origami uh, every week uh some hours with 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 children when when i was still teaching in slovakia but then um after that i was teaching only classes some for for my uh for the kids in my uh, in the school where my kids were uh but i have also many experience with the uh with teaching adults uh during all the conventions and the so I, I I was teaching all the time origami, but this was different because it was like uh, it was combining the teaching experience which I have as as normal teacher at school with uh, with this origami. So for me it was very interesting subject, but as Ilan know very well, it was like for me in the beginning it was like a bit not really boring but it was like I wanted to write or to do something about teaching mathematics because that's what I teach so it felt like and we decided to split the book into two parts because it felt like that's too much to fit inside one book yes. so I really had to find the the I, I don't know how to say the will to to work on it so that's why it took two years. 
Yes. Oh, and it has a lot really of valuable cool. content that the book is amazing. It has a lot of new things also. As Ilan said, the way that you move is very organized in the book. It's really organized because you have the chapter, something that we can call the chapter with lessons. And each lesson is very well designed. And I like something that I never have seen in other books, that you have the diagrams. And also in the book, they have included these. Yeah. So so these barcodes, you never, I never have seen this in another book. So what is this? This is, for example, you put your phone over here and you're going to go to YouTube directly and you're going to see the tutorial. And the tutorial is Mr. Ilan Goridi folding there with his uh, hands and amazing, amazing lessons. So this is something very new in the book. And, the book is really well organized and uh, I like the way that you move because you explain papers, uh, organization of uh, the lessons, you explain everything and you move from traditional origami, you move to modular origami, even to design. So that's a very well organized book. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. <laughs> it's his fault. Hmm? No, it's her fault. Yes. But it's like we, we did different things, like Ilan provided 90% of content and I provided my teaching experience and diagrams and things. So we had different roles, but I think together we made a better book than each of us can make on our own. Yeah, that's true. You had a great, a great team. Yeah. Uh, somebody was asking what's the name of the book. The book is Origami for Teachers. You can find it in Amazon. Uh, les estaba contando yo que el libro está organizado, como dice Ilan Garibi, muy bien organizado. Y tiene algo nuevo que a mí me ha gustado que nunca lo he visto en ningún libro. ¿Qué es lo que tiene? Tiene estos códigos. Son códigos de barra donde ustedes pueden poner el teléfono e inmediatamente los envía el video tutorial en YouTube. Entonces, es un libro muy, muy bonito. And I love the way that you teach the letters. I never, I never thought that I could make letters in the way that you are showing how to make letters. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's, I, I love that one. Whose idea was that? So, so... Uh, I want to say a few things. First, uh, Dasha gave more than 10% to the content. That's not true. Uh, the whole first chapter about origami is, is uh, more hers than mine. It's, she wrote most of it. So uh, it's not really correct to say 90 and 10. I think it's more than 60, 40 or 65, 35, which uh, is like one third and two thirds. Uh, and also, uh, what I gave is the base, but the refinement is, is even more important because the base everybody knows. And I think Dasha added a lot of refinements. So her, her part in the content is, is not as small as she's saying. Um, this is one thing. And the other thing is uh, what we do with the diagram, I think this is also unique. We don't only explain <clears throat> what, uh, what, what you have to read in the diagrams, but we also say how to teach using the diagram. Every step, we explain what can go wrong, what are the uh, common mistakes children do when they try to do this. Uh, be careful because people, uh, the children will forget to turn over the paper and it won't work, so pay attention. So we are actually talking to the, to the teachers mm -hmm. and not to the students. So this is not a book for students. This is a book for teachers. And, and they have everything, including tips, common mistakes, uh, special moments that you have to be careful when you teach, everything is there. Yes, that's true. And that's why, th that's what makes your book even more special because of all those tips and recommendations that you are giving to everybody. Eh, nos estaba diciendo, Ilan, que algo que caracteriza al, al libro es que ellos no solamente les están dando a ustedes los diagramas o el video de cómo plegar algo, sino que también les están diciendo cuáles son los errores comunes que los alumnos pueden cometer en ese momento y cómo corregirlos. Entonces, es un libro muy, muy especial que se mueve de este origami um, tradicional, origami modular, y se mueve hasta origami diseño del origami. Um, as I told you before, this is the first 
a book that I see for teachers. And as I see, you are planning a second part. And the second part of the book is going to be related with math and science. And this is like a general, general origami. Yes, the basics. But the next book, I see that it's going to be more focused on those subjects, right? Yeah, I think, I think the first book is more soft. It's about art, design, creativity, uh, origami per se. Uh, the second book it will be a bit more uh, struct not structured, but uh, science, mathematics are more hard issues maybe, more structured, more, uh, I don't know. So yeah, we, we, we thought that it will be way too much to have everything in one volume because this book is, is uh, 140 pages, something like that. Mm -hmm. So the second book will have about the same number of lessons, so it will be the same size probably. Uh, th there was way too much. And maybe teachers who like mathematics, they don't really like creativity and, uh, and art. So maybe it's more focused to the soft uh, issues, volume one. The second will be more hardcore mathematics, science. And also, it won't, be, it won't be exactly like, uh, because origami and mathematics always go to the same places, uh, geometric. I think we will have a little bit more than that with the scientific part, a little bit of aerodynamics. We are playing with airplanes, um, uh, some pixels. Uh, so it's not really only mathematics. Yeah. It, it's quite broader than that. Yes. A different range of topics, exactly, yes. Yeah, but more specific topics, I see. Yeah, excellent. Eh, Dasha and Ilan uh, están planeando lo que es la segunda versión del, del segundo volumen del libro. Este libro es la enseñanza del origami en general y está, los está invitando a ser creativos. Nos muestran cómo elaborar las letras, imagínense, de la base de Frobel, algo que yo nunca había visto. El segundo volumen del libro va a ser algo un poquito más, eh, más dedicado a lo que son materias, a lo que es ciencias, matemáticas, como dice Ilan, hacer aviones para jugar aerodinámicas. De, eh, o sea, va a ser un libro muy bonito, muy, muy bonito. Eh, Dasha, the diagrams are yours, right? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I can see that okay. that are excellent. Yeah, and you are touching for I love Frobel and I love everything that you have done over here. Um, if one person, many people are very interested in your book and uh, I really highly, highly recommend your book because it's really useful. Sometimes when we are teaching origami, we assume that we know everything and that's a big mistake because we are learning and learning and learning. And uh, I have a long time teaching origami, but I have learned so much about, about origami, about teaching, about methodology, about techniques, or the tips that Mr. Ngarivi says, oh my God, about yes, what the, the problems that students might find. I say, yes, that's true, that's true. Or for example, there was one of the 10 commandments that says, do not touch. Sometimes when I'm teaching and I see the mistakes, I just want to grab the paper and uh, correct it, but do not touch. So that's something that I really, really like about the book. Um, if somebody, if a teacher tells you, okay, why? Why should I get the book? What I will find there that is very useful for me to teach? What would you tell this person? Uh, first, I want to say it's mm -hmm. not fair that you call me Mr. Garibi and you call Dasha Dasha. <laughs> You know, I'm going to tell you something. Dasha, with Dasha, I have a lot, I feel I have a lot of confidence because we have a lot of, um, we have been talking very often, but with you, I haven't talked so much and I, I, I don't know, you are Ilan Garibi, but I'm going to tell Mr. you Ilan. Yes, I don't know, I see <laughs> him like a... I feel okay. old, I feel the old, I'm calling you. Ilan Garibi. Mariela, he's Ilan. It's just Elon. Yes, Elon, yeah, it's perfect okay, Elon. Elon. Like Elon Musk. I promise I'm going to call you like that. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. I think, I think uh, our approach was uh, this book is not for origami people. This book is for teachers. Whatever they teach is okay. Whatever experience they have with origami could be nothing. It could be 
like you a lot, but uh, the idea is to support teachers mm -hmm. from, from zero to be, to, to be able to use origami. Mm -hmm. Why to use origami? We all know. There are so many good things while you teach origami. You help the, the development of the kids, high uh, hand-eye co uh, coordination, patient. There are so many benefits for origami, and it's, and it's so cheap to get them and to do with that. So every teacher who wishes to, to be more creative with the students, to be more uh, fun, because origami is fun, it's magic, you know. Uh, so you teach a, a model, the kids learn, not because because you push material into their heads, because because they are playing with the paper and, and the knowledge goes through the fingers to the heads. So they don't really feel that they are studying and the teacher is telling them and they are writing in the notebook. Uh, you get to understand even a bit deeper level of understanding when you are playing with the paper, you are playing with the, with the ideas and you see them uh, coming to life. I think this is very good. Uh, starting point for a teacher, and also the fact that we gave so much. This is saying uh, uh, we are assuming that you don't know anything about origami. We let you everything. So for some people, it may be like you said, you knew quite a lot of what we written, but we try to be so methodical that we hopefully didn't leave anything out. You even touch paper in a very deep way. That's because of Dasha. I, think. I love it. I love. I love that, yeah. And we are supposed to know about paper all the time, but no, I love the way that she uh, touched paper from the origin and recommendations of how to use paper. That was great. Um, mi, eh, Ilan nos estaba diciendo que este libro no es para la gente que le gusta el origami, sino que es para los maestros. Es un enfoque especial para los maestros. Me va a ayudar bastante, créanmelo. Eh, Dasha, what is your favorite part of the book? What did you like the most uh, from your book? I, it's funny, but uh, I learned a lot through the book because I didn't know much about uh, history of origami and history of paper and, uh, and traditions in origami. And it was very interesting to explore these things because, yes, I knew something. I knew that it's connected to Japan, to China maybe. But I didn't know the details, and uh, for me it was really interesting journey to to discover and to to make some connections because also I love paper. I think it's wonderful material. I I really think that every person who works with origami or with paper should try and make paper themselves. Should visit the paper making workshop because I think that's the experience which something which gives you really deeper understanding understanding about how how this material is made and how it how it works and yes for me paper making it's like I would if somebody tell me like I have a I need a help in my paper making studio I go immediately work there so if somebody wants me yes I will come <laughs> but uh, and, and it was really interesting to to learn more because first, if you want to teach something, if you want to read, uh, write something in the book, you have to know yourself. So it was also for me interesting journey. So I think these parts uh, are very uh, are useful. Or and I think many origami people know things, but they don't really know too much. And I'm not saying that we put too much information in the book. But I think we put the good starting yes. uh, point. Like we, we offer some information which can give you, if you are interested, you can go much, much deeper. We offer some sources where you can go and learn more. But for me, really, this was the part of the journey which was very surprising for me, that it was so interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think as we grow older, I think history is closer to us. And teachers mm -hmm. usually are older than students, so I think for teachers it can be interesting to learn. And I also can imagine that, for example, for some history teacher, it can be good source of uh, they can make lesson folding something, but put uh, in the lesson also part of the history of paper or of origami. 
So yeah, and you know that many people many times uh, write to me and they tell me, Mariela, where can I find some history of origami, some history of paper? And I just say, Google it, Google it. And uh, sometimes I have tried to look for that information, but there is so much information everywhere but the, the information is not specific it's very just a little bit of information so for all the people who are looking for that kind of information it's amazing to have all the information in the book because in the book you are touching the history of origami you are touching about the paper and that's very useful because many people can say oh no i don't need to know about that but when you are teaching and you are moving around the class and your students are falling it's good if you begin talking about the history of origami about the history of paper so the students are not only folding but they are gaining a lot of knowledge and they you are make them you are making them to become passionate about origami and that's something that I really like about the book so there are so many yes. strategies that you can apply as a teacher and yeah. one more thing that I, 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 I really think that the book is a good starting point we are not saying that this is all you have to know we are saying this is enough to start so it's, if no, you want to know more, no, you can go and search because now you know it was China was included, this was this, that, and then you can search on your own. Exactly, yeah. Eh, fíjense que muchas personas a veces me escriben y me dicen que les recomiende enlaces sobre la historia del origami, sobre el papel. Y bueno, a veces cuando uno lo está buscando en internet hay tan poca información en tantos lugares, pero si ustedes buscan en el libro, acá ellos han tocado lo que es la historia del origami, del papel. Cuando ustedes están enseñando origami, ustedes no solo van a ir a, a, a enseñar un objeto, una figura, sino que ustedes tienen que moverse alrededor del salón de clases y también tienen que explicar, hablarles a los a alumnos, si no los van a aburrir, ¿me entienden? Entonces todas esas son estrategias que el libro le da. Ilan, what was your favorite part of the book? Oh, and I want to tell you something. I made the mold of the cake and somebody was asking me, I cannot believe that can be used as a, a, for a mold for a cake. It's beautiful. And they were asking me, what kind of paper do you need in order to bake the cake? So, <laughs> uh, what I did is I took elephant hide and I mm -hmm. coated it with, with uh, aluminum aluminum foil. Oh, that was, yeah, that was an amazing idea. Very clever, original, and it's the first time that I see origami using for baking. But Ilan, what was your favorite part of the book? Because I see that you touch, even there is a part that it touch how to teach desolation, the basics for teaching desolations, or the basics for teaching um, origami in design, and you show a beautiful uh, lampshade, something like that. So what was your favorite part of the book? So, uh, to be honest, my favorite part is the diagrams. Mm. Because every wow. time I look, every time I look at Dasha's diagrams, it's unbelievably beautiful. And it's so clear. And I'm yeah. so happy that she's doing those diagrams for me. For me, it's, it's the best ever diagrams you can see in origami books nowadays. So, I feel the book is more clear, more uh, reachable because of the 3D net that Dasha put in the diagram. So the, it's so clear yes. that uh, uh, you, you see it in a lot of diagrams. When we were reading books when we were children, uh, it was all flat, no shading, no colors, no, no nothing. And you had to have a lot of, let's say, I don't know, brain power to make the speediness of the of the diagrams into the reality of the paper mm -hmm. but with dasha's work the everything looks like it in your hand so i think this this is a great um benefit and great aspect of the book that makes it even more approachable for people who never did origami yes. so yeah that's definitely the, the favorite part uh, did Dasha do the, the diagrams for your desolation books? No, no, actually the desolation was by Francisca Schwartz, mm -hmm. which is also beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dasha is using a very special technique with, with images that she takes. So yes. I'm not going to get into the details, but her diagrams are so realistic. That's exactly. That's exactly. true. That's true.
and they're going to be very useful for the students when you are working with a book and uh, because the, the, those are very well elaborate, elaborated uh, diagrams even i could fold the cake mold even i could fold it imagine when i tell you even i Mariela. i i don't <laughs> fold tessellations i don't fold the only tessellations that i was very successful to fold were the ones in ilan's book that i love them but i don't fold tessellations if i go to miguel gagnan's book i get lost i don't understand anything but your your designs are so beautiful yes Uh, le he preguntado a Ilan qué es lo que más le gustó del libro y él dice que le gustan mucho los diagramas, porque los diagramas de los eh, Dasha, está, Dasha está utilizando diferentes técnicas en los diagramas y realmente son diagramas muy lindos y muy hermosos. And uh, the last thing, the last thing, is there anything that you would like to add about the book? Because there are many people who are really interested about, very interested about getting the book. So um, is there something you want to add about this beautiful and wonderful book? So the book is, is actually a gate uh, to, to more content. Uh, more content we supply with the, with the video links, mm -hmm. but uh, we We also give names and places that you can find and and invent your own models, not models, sorry, your own lessons yeah. based on whatever model you find. Exactly. And another thing that we give out of the book is the hands out. Mm -hmm. Because in many, in many cases you have problems, how can I use, what should I do, uh, can I copy and give the students, and we are clearly saying, mm -hmm. there's a link, download, Print and give everything to your students. So we prepared, uh, Dasha prepared uh, uh, special files that are accessed through the book that you can mm -hmm. download all the hands out. They are all in black and white, so it will be easy for you, not expensive. You don't need the color. We don't have color in the book to, to keep it simple, to keep it uh, cheap. And, yes. and you have everything. When I say everything, I mean everything that you need beside the papers yes we cannot send you the paper exactly so. that, yeah imagine even the lessons um Ilan nos está diciendo que algo que le gusta mucho del libro es que el libro está en blanco y negro y si ustedes se preguntan por qué el libro está en blanco y negro es porque ellos están dando también lo que son los diagramas están los de, en la página donde ustedes pueden descargar los diagramas para que ustedes los trabajen con sus alumnos. O sea, todas las lecciones ya están preparadas y eso es el principio para eh, enseñar origami. Entonces, les recomiendo mucho que adquieran el libro. Como ustedes pueden ver, va desde diseños sencillos hasta diseños un poquito más complejos. Es un libro muy, muy bonito. And uh, Dasha is going to teach today how to fold the pajarita. And you know, one day I, I made one video about folding the pajarita and one person told me, Mariela, that's very different from the way that I fold it. It's a very nice design. And uh, I love what you have done with the pajarita in the book, yes? But before folding the pajarita with Dasha, I want to ask Ilan to tell us a little bit about the World Marathon. Remember the World Marathon is coming next month. There is a profile here in Instagram about the World Marathon. And every day they are uploading. So now they have trivia questions and you are going to receive a prize. So please follow uh, the World Marathon uh, profile, the page. And uh, Ilan, could you tell us a little bit about the World Marathon, please? So people, people who don't know about it, they can know about that. So The, the, the World Marathon is actually two days of non-stop folding, 48 hours in a row, uh, that goes around the world. We start in, in Japan and we go uh, westward all the time. Every hour we jump one hour forward. And uh, it's all about creators teaching their original designs. And uh, I think it's, it becomes a... Sorry? Different levels. So, yes, there are at different level different genres we are trying to be uh to balance everything we want to have simple and complex short and long lessons male and female teachers uh geometric and figurative uh non people but also new teachers that never been on the marathon before 
We try to look and find uh, new creators. So we are trying to balance everything and we have uh, every year, this is the first time that we are doing it. Uh, we have, I think, great lineup this year, quite a lot of amazing models, but also simple models. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a happening. Uh, of course, nobody can last 48 hours. So uh, we are going to release pre-recorded videos, so you have access immediately after the lesson. If you cannot follow, you can really uh, log in into YouTube and uh, we um, we publish the videos immediately after the lesson. So and and the video stays for a year. So you have a uh, you have a lot of action and folding action waiting for you in the next mm -hmm. marathon. Yes. Excellent. That's great. Eh, para todas las personas que estaban preguntando, se acerca la maratón de origami el próximo mes de septiembre. 48 diseños, 48 diseñadores enseñando sus propios diseños. Se abarcan diferentes niveles. Se ha tomado todo. Así que ya saben, por favor, si quieren asistir a la maratón, ahí está. Eh, pueden ya adquirir lo que es su tiquete y yo voy a estar regalando un ticket por acá. Lo voy a publicar el día de mañana, así que no se lo pierdan. And, um, Thank you so much, Ilan, for being here. Thank you so much for this wonderful book. I am going to, I know, I'm not going to be the only one. A lot of people are going to be work, uh, waiting for volume number two because volume number two is going to be very, very useful too. This one is amazing. This one is great. And uh, there are so many things. I don't want to tell, uh, for example, about the letters and those things because I don't want to reveal those secrets. I just tell that the book is Worthy and the book is really good for teachers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. And Dasha, is there something that you want to add about the book? Um, I think it's a good book. <laughs> a good book, no. And a useful Great. book. No, the thing is, uh, when you do the book like this and uh, you usually it's only me and Ilan who saw the book from the like when we were working on it so the first person who saw the book as a whole uh that was important for me and I showed it to my one of my uh, teaching friend uh, she's teaching uh, mathematics and biology and uh she was so uh enthusiastic about, about the book like I was really I was a bit afraid like what 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 will she tell about the book and she was so enthusiastic that i was just such a nice uh okay surprise for me that and not not a surprise but a relief that i was like okay the, this is the teacher whom i really um um it's my good friend but it's also somebody who's very intelligent uh, who her opinion was really very important for me and when she said that the book is amazing and that she fell in love with it, like for me, it was such a such a nice um, and important message that, okay, now I believe that the book is good. Mm. When she said the book is good, I, yeah. she was I can imagine it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely a great book. Yes. I know that many people are going to get it and um, it's going to be very useful. I... As I tell you, there are so many things that I love about the book and uh, I'm going to try many of these techniques. I have learned a lot and I'm going to be waiting for the second part so eagerly, believe me. And um, okay, now you told me that you are going to teach La Pajarita, to fold the Pajarita. Why? Okay, I think uh, it's interesting model because yes, it's simple and everything, but if you think about crane, uh, boat, and all these traditional models, pajarita feels quite modern and different because pajarita doesn't have these overlapping layers. Like there is no lock uh, which would overlap layers over layers. Like you don't hold something to hide something or to, to lock things in place. Uh, so it's very elegant. Like there is, uh, if you look at it it's like really the, the the layers are very nicely arranged it's super geometrical it's super simple in the end 
but even with all of this the folding is not simple like the folding is a bit tricky mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen your video, so I can't say uh, what's your method, but when I was searching, like, how will I show how to fold it, it was interesting because there were many, several methods, but I didn't like them. It was like, you have to fold something over and then you were like, rem and now, now what? Now I have to go there. And it was strange for me. Like, I was really trying to find the method which would satisfy me. So, and that's the methods which, which are in the book and which we will fold. So that's why I, when I was thinking, what can we fold? Even if it is traditional model, maybe everybody already folded it. I think it can be folded in many different ways. Yes. And I think it shows very well how important it is, which folding method you choose and how much it influences your joy from folding yes but sometimes it can be really that the method is wrong N nothing wrong with the model but you didn't choose the right method now i am it's like if i was saying this is the best method no this is not the best method this is the method which i find very satisfying and i hope that the other people will find it as well but yeah that's so. true many methods to follow paharita you know in japan la paharita is taught a lot and it appears in many books in japan and i thought that it was a traditional japanese method a, a traditional japanese uh, design but one day i was talking with jordi and jordi adele and he told me no mariela la pajarita is from spain and i was like what i was like surprised because i didn't know that it was spanish and i didn't know about vicente palacio's work jose Meusen was telling me about his work about la pajarita it's a very iconic design yes Yes. So I, I learned it only very late. Like I, I, I knew about paper crane and, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. boat and things like that, but I never saw Pairita, I don't know, maybe till some convention where Ilan was folding it with the chopsticks or something like that. <laughs> uh, I want to no, say, so. I want to say that uh, one of the, the benefits of working with Dasha is she never leave the process the same. Whatever mm. diagrams I give her, she look at them, fold them, find a better version, and she will diagram the better version. And I think this is something that you won't find with any other diagrammer, because what they do is they just follow what you give them. Exactly. But she wants to make sure that the, 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 the path is the clearest and the easiest. And I think that that's what you will see with the Baharita because definitely I never seen anything which make it so simple. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's that's great about Dasha's diagrams. I know Dasha's diagrams are very special from the first book that I got from her and I love the the diagrams. Yeah. And this one is the Baharita, it's a great design. And as you say, many ways to fold it, but it's 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 tricky. Eh, hoy vamos a plegar la pajarita, fíjense bien. Algunos van a decir, pero Mariela, ¿por qué vamos a plegar la pajarita? Es algo tan simple, tan sencillo. Fíjense que hay diferentes formas de plegar la pajarita. Entonces, Dasha nos va a enseñar una forma. No sé si va a ser la misma forma que ustedes utilizan. No sé si ustedes pueden plegar la pajarita de memoria. Traten de plegarla de memoria, así como podemos plegar lo que es la grulla de memoria. Así que el día de hoy vamos a plegar la pajarita con Dasha. Así que solamente van a necesitar una hoja de papel. So, Dash, are you ready to teach us the pajarita? Yeah. Ilan, do you want to stay or do you want to go in no. home arrest? Oh, I, will, I will say goodbye and thank you so much for your time. And, and uh, we, are, we are so happy that you love the book. It's so important, the no. feedback for us. Uh, thank yeah, I you. I, I just missed to write a recommendation in Amazon and I will. The book is amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the hard work that you are doing because um, you are one of the persons that I see that. That's why I feel a lot of respect for you because you're one of the persons who is always immersed in the world of origami and you are doing marathons and you are getting books and you are doing different events. And this helps 
all the people who love origami like me. Thank you for your active work, really. It's really well appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, and enjoy the workshop, Ms. Dasha. Thank you so much, Ilan. Bye-bye. Yes, sir, what's about telling Bye, you? Ilan. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, so right now we're going to be only with Dasha, and she is going to teach us La Pajarita. Dasha, you know, I can fall by heart. Uh, the crane but not la pajarita so yeah. today i'm going to learn it to fold it by uh, by heart with you mm -hmm. and i one last thing i wanted to say it's like i don't have i'm not saying this is the best way it's, it's really like i'm always trying to find a way which is satisfying for me uh, and i like clear things I, I like when things are clear and i I like when things just, uh, you know, jump in the place or you do movement and suddenly it's there. So that's what I'm trying to search for. And That is a quality. And that is because of that passion that you have through ori for origami. So you say, I'm going to do it better and you find a way. Yeah. Yes, but yes, I, I, I hope. hope. I'm going to turn off the comments. Um, turn off comments. So you can see very well. You have an assignment. Please try to learn La Pajarita by heart. Try to fold it by heart because it's a beautiful model. Traten de plegar la pajarita siempre de memoria, así como plegamos la grulla, porque es un gran diseño, especialmente para las personas de habla española. Okay, Dasha, we are all yours. Okay, perfect. And one more thing that it's really important and I would invite you to really try to fold exactly as uh, as I do so okay. that you can experience the same folding process. Okay. Eh, Dasha nos está invitando a plegar exactamente como ella lo hace. Así que vamos a plegar la pajarita en la forma que lo hace Dasha. Okay, Dasha. Let's hope I won't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> can happen. So five side up, and we fold one uh, diagonal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We open, and I turn the paper. So we see mountain. Mm -hmm. Now we add second. diagonal mm -hmm. and we open and now we bring all the corners to the center we blend mm -hmm. miren estamos haciendo una blind space Con there's la... another thing we were talking a lot about vocabulary and that it's good to if you are teaching the same group uh, you can really profit from uh, using the same vocabulary because once your uh, students learn that this is blinds, you just need to say blinds and it's clear. All the time, yeah. Do. You say, follow blinds base and immediately they will. Yeah, that's yes. it. Okay, so now it's important because you can see two flaps with mountain mm -hmm. and two with valley. Yeah. And we we are going to open everything, just keep one mountain. Vamos a abrir, si se fijan, hay dos valles y dos montañas. Vamos a abrir todos los lados y vamos a dejar solamente uno de montaña, ok? Now we turn the paper over. And I rotate it so that corner is here, the missing corner is here. And now we are going to do the the little manipulation. So now I'm going to take this edge and bring it to these two. Or you can also imagine that this short edge will go to this line. Oh. I hope it's visible in the video. But you don't have to fold till the end. It's enough to fold just one, one part. Yeah. So this one you can keep mm -hmm. unfold, okay. not fold it. So only in this first triangle. Just a triangle, yes. Es el, solamente vamos a plegar hasta el triangulito, ¿ok? 
Okay, now I'm taking this corner and I will, uh, because here is the valley mm -hmm. and here is the mountain. So I will push, uh, pull this corner down and the paper will almost automatically want to mm -hmm. uh, fold like this. And I will again fold only in this first. Mm -hmm. Until you reach the angle of the triangle, yes. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Vamos a plegar nuevamente la línea hasta que alcanzamos la puntita del triángulo. Now I rotate the thing. And I am going to do similar thing as we did a bit before. So I will bring this to this uh, edge of the paper or you can also imagine these two points will go to here and here. Yes. And once again, we don't fold to the end. We just fold in this first triangle. So yeah. three times we fold it only till the triangles. Yeah. Uh, in the triangle. Miren, plegamos otra vez hasta el triangulito. Hey, Dasha, that's a new way to fold the pajarita. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, I'm... And that's a nice model because when you can find so many folding sequences, that's like, it's very playful. You can really explore the model and find your own way. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So now I, it's maybe easier when you rotate the paper like this. So, uh, because now I am going to use what we did. Mm -hmm. Here you have to change it into mountain. I think this one was valley. Yes. But the folds are there. And now I'm going to use also these two valley folds. You see, here are one valley, second yeah. valley. So again, as we did before, but now we have two side, like yeah. both corners are already done. And I just bring them like this. Mm -hmm. And here is my last uh, fold inside the triangle. Yes. Okay. And we are almost done. Mm -hmm. Ya casi terminamos. We just, just take this two. Uh, it will be the front legs in the end. Mm -hmm. oh, no, the Payarita doesn't have front legs, but wings. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, and it, we just I just fold it to the to the mm -hmm. other side. And look, it looks like a fish. Yes, it looks like a fish. Yes. So now you can you can also make a story with uh, using these different steps. If you if you are creative enough, you can. All these simple models are very good for for creating some simple stories for for smaller kids. It's so it's nice wow. and it's easier to remember as, it as a story that's a nice suggestion miren la forma en la que Dasha lo está eh, eh, explicando parece un pececito entonces ella dice que a ustedes los que trabajan con niños también con adultos mayores pueden plegarla creando historias entonces eh, me acabo de acordar de de Chris de Argentina que crea historias. Miren qué lindo. Ustedes la pueden usar para contar historias y ustedes la utilizan para enseñar. That's amazing. I love it. I love the idea. Okay, and now we are almost done. Like everything is ready. I just turn the paper so you see just this uh, triangle and who already folded pajarita. I think mm -hmm. you know what will we do. And we will just, if I push this, because here is valley which is there. We will just push these two things together and I will just squash uh, the head so that it, uh, that this central line is mountain. Oh, and there we have the famous pajarita. And, and we have the famous pajarita without any uh, uh, pulling paper from inside, which I really don't like. Exactly, <laughs> so. yes. Eh, fíjense bien cómo lo hizo Dasha. Es una forma muy novedosa porque casi siempre que la plegamos hay que sacar el papel de adentro. Y ella lo hizo todo rotando, rotando, rotando. Miren qué forma más bonita. Congratulations, Dasha. That's a beautiful design. I love the way you folded it. Okay, I, um, it's all good. That, uh, it's not 
I, I don't think it's easy to remember. Yeah, it's not easy. No, it's but, fast. Yes, yeah, it's, it's easy to fall. Yeah. Uh, and also, it is like the kids should concentrate. And it's really important that here you can talk about importance of uh, orientation of the faults because we we had to reverse maybe one fault. Everything else were placed as we were using it basically. Exactly. After. Yeah. Yes. This is the first time I see this method and I really love it. Miren que bonito. Dasha, you are really yes. a very clever, 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 clever designer. I love the way you fold the pajarita. Totally different. I have seen that three days. I have done it like this, of course. Mine was pulling paper and I was practicing so much to do it. And yeah, it was directly to the point. And these are the handouts because I, I just printed it. But mm -hmm. this is how they look like. It's not, it's, it's just the, it's exactly the same what we did. And I just printed it from the file which is prepared for the for the teacher if they want to because we also recommend to give these things once the folding is done so they are not like looking what are we doing because sometimes kids get uh, distracted with if you give them diagrams before you fold so we recommend that yeah. for later when you already folded the model so that they can fold it again at home because they already know you already went through all the steps. That's so. That's a good one. That's a good one. Y miren lo que Dash acaba de decir es algo que me parece muy importante cuando ustedes están haciendo origami. No le den a las personas el diagrama cuando no han plegado. Primero que lo plieguen y después se pueden utilizar el diagrama, el diagrama porque si no lo va a distraer. That's a, a, a great point. Dasha, something that I forgot about your book is that I love because you I love your book because you not only show how to fold with people but also online. So, online teaching. So you touch in person and online. Yes, because uh, I think the COVID uh, showed everybody that we can be in the situation that we have to do it online. And we had so many experience also Elan with all the marathons and all the online events that we just put together also this short uh, recommendation for folding uh, online. So you could have seen I am uh, now in not my place, so I have to uh, improvise. <laughs> improvise. Exactly. Yeah. So I have the contraption here to just to make my phone hold but uh, yes if you were in normal if i was in normal connection con conditions i would have a bit more <laughs> better but i hope you have seen everything no it was, it was, it was great yeah eh, algo que me gusta del libro de Dafe que les olvidé mencionar es el hecho de que ellos también no solamente tocan lo que es cómo enseñar origami en persona sino que también en línea dasha congratulations for the book Thank you so much for all the effort that you put. It's really worth it. I love the way that you taught us how to fold La Pajarita. It's, it's the best way I have found. You say you are very modest and you say, no, it's not the best way, but it's easy. For me, it's the best way. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, I wanted to thank you, Mariela, because you are doing all these uh, lives with us uh, all the time. Uh, all the time when somebody is making new book you are like yes let's make a live and it's uh, it's very nice for us so i just wanted to say that i'm going I, to tell you something your... thank you so much i am going to tell you something i like to do this kind of lives because there are many people in latin america who don't speak english and they want to know they want to know and so uh, i like to tell them because sometimes they don't know or something is going on and they don't know and i have to tell them and uh, something that you miss for next time a book in spanish you have to work in the spanish version okay mm -hmm. yeah because there are many people who speak spanish yeah yes, so i realized yeah that's that you could take it also in spanish because believe me that's going to be useful for people who yeah who want the book we can have yeah be willing to translate then we can 
think about it. But we see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And anything that you need, I you can tell me. I anything that you need about translation, I do it very gladly because I do it for my people. People from Latin America sometimes they need some books in Spanish, and we don't have so many books in Spanish. Yeah. It's a good idea. We will, we will certainly, I will talk yeah, uh, with you. For Elon. the next one, for that. That's number two. That would be great. A book in Spanish. Yeah. That's that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And please try to learn the set, and that's going to be your homework. Try to hold the pajarita, remembering that process. Eh, methodology because it's, it's really good. Traten de aprender la metodología de Dasha para plegar la pajarita de memoria y enseñenla porque es un gran diseño. So people sometimes they underestimate this model and this model is wonderful. I, I, I think it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a gem. It's a, because it is like kind of in between tessellations, corrugations, and figurative because it has this very geometric crease pattern and really i i think the the crane you have to you will always fall the same way there is no other way only to get the bird base okay you can go several different methods but here pajarita uh, you can go really there are so many ways how to do it Yes, that's true. That's another thing about la pajarita. No menosprecien este diseño. Tiene tantas formas de plegarse y es un diseño muy lindo. Dasha, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Thank and you. for doing it for Spanish people as well. Yeah. Dasha dice que muchas gracias a todas las personas que hablan español también por estar aquí. Así que gracias a todos. See you soon, Dasha. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Gracias a todos por estar aquí. See you, Dasha. Bye-bye. Gracias.